Hello New Zealand, hello world. Today we are going to bring you a review on a new exciting movie. We just watched it called Radio Pirates. And this is a uh, important piece of New Zealand history. It was a movie about radio hierarchy. A New Zealand rock music station that started in 1966, that's the year it was born. It was the first private commercial radio station of the modern broadcasting era in New Zealand and operated illegally until 1970 to break the monopoly held by the state-owned New Zealand Broadcasting Corporation. Yeah, they wanted to play chamber music, music of dead people like Mozart, Tchaikovsky, etc. Not what the people wanted. The rest of the world would probably listen to rock and roll, but these turkeys wouldn't allow it okay so radio hierarchy when it first started up they rebelled against that they tried to get a license they wouldn't give them one they mucked them around as you'll see in the movie if you watch it um, keep taking their uh, equipment off them and all this sort of stuff they ran into a lot of pro uh, problems but they persevered they even lost one of their members and drowned um, yeah, so from its founding until 2012, Haraki played a mix of classic and mainstream rock music. In 2013, it changed its music content, playing modern rock and alternative rock from the last 25 to 30 years. As of 2019, more classic rock and progressive rock is being increasingly played. In its modern legal form, Radio Haraki's head office and main studios are now located at Graham Street in Auckland CBD. Chair is one of eight stations of NZME Radio. Private commercial radio stations had operated from the earliest days of broadcasting, but the government began to close them down, the process accelerating after World War II. To break the state monopoly, Radio Hierarchy was originally formed as a pirate station in the Hierarchy Gulf. Uh, you can see it's like a three mile in limit, international waters, so you shouldn't have been able to touch them. Okay. A pirate station in Harrick Gulf in a famous and historic story that saw the loss of one life. Yeah, one of their friends died, drowned, accidentally knocked overboard, fell overboard. Early years, the concept of Radio Harrick originated with a group of journalists who felt dissatisfied with New Zealand Broadcasting Corporation NZBC radio stations and with the politics involved with broadcasting in New Zealand. Private stations were able to apply for licenses to operate, but the New Zealand Broadcasting Services or NZBS, it's NZBS, stonewalled all applications. A small group involving David Gapes, Derek Lowe, Ian Megan, Chris Parkinson and Dennis O'Callaghan decided with legal assistance to start a private venture operating in international waters outside of the confines of the monopolistic government department of the NZBC which ran all land-based radio stations and of the New Zealand Post Office, which managed the radio spectrum. Gapes, Lowe, Megan, McGann, Parkinson, O'Callaghan eventually broke the radio monopoly, thus allowing private radio to become widespread in New Zealand. The five men bought a boat and tried to make it seaworthy. However, the Marine Department continuously rejected the application for a warrant of fitness for the ship so in 1966 the crew set sail anyway without the water fitness. However, the ship got caught on a drawbridge in the Auckland viaduct and the crew were arrested. When they went to court, the judge ruled in favour of them and in late 1966 the Turi, the boat chosen to carry the transmitter, anchored in the Haraki Gulf outside the three mile territorial water limit. The station broadcast on the frequency of 1480 kilohertz well outside the range of frequencies used by the NZBC. After testing the transmitter with a broadcast from pirate announcer Bob Leahy, oh, I remember that guy. Yeah, radio announcer, yeah, I remember that guy. And having to replace the mast after winds of more than 30 knots knocked it down, Radio Hierarchy officially started broadcasting on 4th December 1966. Pirate Radio. During the next two years, the crew on the Turi would endure adverse weather conditions, fatigue, and continued efforts to shut down the station. 
On 28 January 1968, disaster struck as the Turi attempted to negotiate its way into Whangaparoa Harbour on Great Barrier Island in foul weather. The ship ran aground on rocks with Radio Haraki disc jockey Paul Lineham keeping listeners up to date with running commentary. The final broadcast from the Turi was quote, Haraki News, Haraki crew is abandoning the ship. This is Paul Lineham aboard the Turi. Good night. Followed, uh, unquote, followed by a station jingle. The Turi was later towed back to Auckland and the broadcasting equipment was salvaged. However, the Turi herself was beyond repair and was replaced four days later by the Carpuni, christened Turi 2 by her new crew. A month after the loss of Turi, of the Turi, Radio Haraki was back in international waters and broadcasting again. In April of the same year, Turi 2 found herself beached again at Whangaparoa Harbour, a victim of the same storm that resulted in the Wahine disaster. Yeah, that was a major disaster here. After repairs, she was back at sea in five days. Between this time and June 1968, Tiri 2 would end up beached at Urutiti Beach, Urutiti Beach and caught several times broadcasting from New Zealand waters by radio inspectors. Just before Christmas 1968, Radio Haraki became New Zealand's first 24-hour broadcasting radio station. Radio Haraki was not live radio. The studios were land-based, and most programs were recorded on reel-to-reel tapes in half-hour segments, approximately one week prior to their broadcast. This, as in the film, it says they stopped the uh, needle and the record player jumping because of the waves in the sea, uh, tossing the boat. This meant that while contests, current top tunes, etc. could be accommodated, news and weather were more of a challenge. Tiri was owned by AG Frankham Limited and was registered as a barge. After running aground at Whangaparoa on what's that, what's that, Whangapara, Para, on 28 January 1968, it was laid up at Limestone Island near Whangare. The search and rescue boat Moroda was owned by Bill Gibbs and Trifina. Kapuni, also owned by A.G. Franklin Limited, became known as Tiri 2 only during Haraki service from 1968 to 1970. It was laid up on Rotoroa Island in the Haraki Gulf. Legal radio. In mid 1970, the state monopoly on radio frequencies was broken, with the New Zealand Broadcasting Authority finally allowing Radio Haraki to broadcast on land legally. The Radio Haraki crew had spent 1,111 days at sea. The final broadcast from the seabound Haraki pirates was a documentary on the station's history until that point, finishing at 10 pm when Tiri 2 turned and headed for Auckland playing. Quote, born free and quote continually. During their final voyage back to shore, announcer Rick Grant was lost overboard. Radio Haraki began FM transmission in 1990 on 99.0 FM, and the 1476 kilohertz frequency was subsequently acquired by a local community group to broadcast the BBC World Service. During the late 90s, Radio Haraki was networked into other regions around the North Island, of New Zealand, and in 2003. Radio Haraki, Radio Haraki was networked into the South Island in Christchurch, Dunedin and Invercargill. Veteran pirate announcer Bob Leahy remained a newsreader for the radio network right up until 2009, which saw him remain on air on Radio Haraki some 40 years after he helped begin the station. After several changes in ownership, Radio Haraki, or Haraki is now operated by NZME, Radio becoming a radio network broadcasting across New Zealand. Up until 2012, Hauraki Hauraki played a mix of classic and mainstream rock music from the 60s till now. In 2013, Hauraki changed its music content playing modern rock and alternative rock from the last 25 years, also changed their positioning statement to it's different to coincide with their change in format. Current hosts include high profile personalities such as Matt Heath, Jeremy Wells, yeah, now he's on um, TV1 News online, something like that. Uh, Mikey Havoc, who's a relation of us, on my mother's side. Leah Hart, Jason Hoyter, Steve Simpson and Tim Batch. Yeah, Mikey Havoc used to be in the band Push Push. Uh, you might remember that song. I was freaking out on you or something. Tripping out on you, yeah. I was tripping out on you. Um, such a while ago. 
The station claims that the recent changes have resulted in a substantial increase in listeners. The film dramatising Radio Hierarchy's early years through Mile Limit was released in 2014. I think Kevin Barry was on it, wasn't he? Or, no, Kevin Black. I'm sure Kevin Black was on it. Um, at some point. Programs. Hierarchy Breakfast. Breakfast 6am to 10 am slot is hosted by Matt Heath and Jeremy Wells. News and weather sourced from the NCDB newsroom is heard every 30 minutes. Read out by Ash Thomas, etc. etc. Other programs. Okay, former hosts. Then McChesney, Christopher Parkinson, Ross Goodwin, Paddy O'Donnell, Bob Leahy, Mike Parkinson, Dave White, etc. etc. Uh, this is on here. Paul Lineham, Rick Grant. Who else? Phil Gifford. Oh, yeah, yeah. Phil Gifford. Um, is that Lucy Lynn? I'm not really sure. Probably not. Yeah, I remember Phil Gifford. John Hawksby, old news reporter. Leah Panapa, yeah, remember her. Uh, Fred Bodica, I sort of remember her. Maybe Frank Bodica, the rugby player. All black. Yeah. Um, maybe his bro. But I really to wit, yeah, a bit of comedian there. Um, okay, it's oh, Philip Schofield, you all know him. He came out and said he was gay, but yeah, he was on um, lots of programs. I can't remember what they were. Okay, um, the Morning 2002 to Present presenter, yeah, there he is there. Uh, Dancing on Ice with Holly Willoughby. Yeah, English TV presenter who works for ITV. Yeah, um, well, yeah, he was on Shazam way back in '82, so like a kids' program. He returned to Britain. Former breakfast host Kevin Black became New Zealand's highest paid radio DJ and served as breakfast host for Solid Gold between 1997 and 2009. Oh, jeez, he died. He died in 2013. Old Blackie, you might um, see him on a YouTube video parody of um, Dean Martini dressing as um, the fridge, right? Uh, he's doing the fridge, and uh, the fridge is mine. I bought a fridge, is mine. Yeah, pretty funny parody. Um, yeah, pretty good radio station, haven't listened to it for ages, but yeah, this movie, brilliant, maybe. Yeah, not true to fact by the, these this here at Wikipedia but yeah brilliant movie anyway makes you proud to be a Kiwi New Zealander okay, so at the end it states Radio Hierarchy was the first pirate radio station in the world to be granted a land based license the yeah, first pirate radio station on their first day of broadcast from land a bulldozer accidentally cut through the transmission cable and they still rock on yeah they rock on to this very day ok yeah, they are there at some point ship sunk they're all on the beach happy as Larry yeah. this is like the tech wizard right <laughs> there's an Irishman here somewhere funny as Irishman business guy another one that stutters but yeah that brilliant this is supposed to be the guy that founded it all but I guess they changed the names and all that sort of stuff um yeah, brilliant movie there, brilliant. We'll put a link to it if you want to watch it. Yeah, bit of Kiwi nostalgia. New Zealand. Yeah, when they're uh, doing pirate radio. Cheer. Okay, so if you like it, go watch it. I'll leave the link below. Okay. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. Especially you Kiwis out there, give us a thumbs up, show us some love, show us some support, subscribe to our channel, set that uh, notification bell, add your comments, yeah. and um, you got to tell the rest of the Kiwis, hey man, watch this movie, it's brilliant. We watched it, and it's brilliant, it makes us proud to be a Kiwi. Cheers.